it's the proudest day and the proudest time and the a seat of a rally here because that day and that hour and those minutes I got the butt between my teeth you know I really stood up and was counted and said this is not getting away I remember when we pulled on our helmets and, and, and Donald says to me what are we doing I said we're going for gold Barrett and that's all we said I can still pick to that run that was just the best best run ever Welcome along to Crunching Gears, the Rally Podcast, episode 38. I'm delighted to be once again joined by Connor Edwards. Connor, you're very welcome. Hi, Kevin. Thank you very much. Great to be back. Uh, we were off last week, uh, but we're back with a bang this week again. Um, we look back at Banna Beach. We catch up with Richard Moffat. Then we look at, we'll have a quick chat about the Cambrian in a few minutes. And we also catch up with Michael McGade and Dayton Casey and what a year they've had. Uh, in the UK course in the historic classes, but more about that after. Uh, Ryan Champion then joins us as well. Uh, we catch up. With, he drove the Gran Turismo. There was three Group B cars come up for auction there at the weekend. Uh, he had an opportunity to drive them. That's a fascinating story. Uh, then we catch up with Kieran Graffin, and he tells us that uh, was on the day that they kind of launched the Cleos down in St. Angels, and we speak to the drivers that drove the car on the day as well. Um, I have to say that's a very exciting project, but again, more of that after a while. Scott Singleton, uh, maybe not a name that many are familiar with, but uh, a lovely story. And it's, I'm not sure if anybody can guess his father, but <laughs> more of that later as well. Uh, then also, uh, Aoife Rafferty joins us as well. Uh, she's had a fantastic year and it's not finished yet. She's a few Italian adventures before the end of the year. But uh, I suppose, uh, Connor, we'll start off with uh, Banna Beach. Um, or sorry, the Cambrian actually will start with a great performance with some of the Irish crews over there. Absolutely fantastic drives. Um, what do you call it? Really impressive now. And uh, uh, but in particular, uh, certainly for me, the standout we young Johnny Mahollan there. I thought he had a cracking run in that, that rally. Yeah, I, you know, he clinched the, the JBRC category. And I think that leaves him third overall in the Junior uh, British Rally Championship as well, too. So. That's brilliant for Johnny. Delighted to see it. And, and, and you know, Eamon Kelly come up, uh, finished third overall, one fastest time in, over on the day as well too. So like, that's brilliant. Uh, and his first time on gravel in the R5 car, like, that's highly commendable. Patrick O'Brien and Stephen, you know, the first time in the the, the Skoda and the BRC, were comfortably third. And yeah. there was, you know, they said they had a few wee issues up until their retirement as well too. So you know. Like I said Patrick was going to be a, a dark horse for the rally, and I don't, I, I wasn't disappointed by his performance. I have to say, Jason Mitchell and, and Paddy McCrudden, like uh, fourth, I think it was, or going into the last stage and just didn't come out of the last stage. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but like again, you know, hard to argue. Like uh, Jason has developed so much over the past year. Uh, like a great guy and a great performance as well. Just unfortunately, didn't get a finish. Yeah, just a very unfortunate for them. I thought they they were having a good run. It's just the, the, the what do you call it? Just look at the draw. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. the way it went. But uh, no, they had a good performance. And again, you know, just jumping back there, you mentioned Eamon, You know, Eamon having a fastest stage time there as well. So you know, mm-hmm. incredible performance by himself in the in the polo. Yeah, that's brilliant. You know, for his first time, like, and like great to see uh, Oliver Solberg back and enjoying his rally and like the smiles back. You know, the fun seems to be back there as well. And, you know, the car prepared by Melvin Evans, you know, like, so Marion was always involved, you know, Marion's been on the show now a few times. Uh, great for that that whole team as well. Listen, you know, two two points you mentioned there very well, you know, pressure was off Oliver. It was a chance for him just to go out and have a bit of fun, just relax and just get back to the, you know, get back to the, you know, the basics and just enjoy competing again, not having the pressure of, you know, being part of a works team. Um, and as you say, uh, what do you call it? Melvin Evans's crew there, you know, fantastic performance running the cars. Uh, and uh, yeah, look, I don't think Oliver's polo could have ran more sweetly. And uh, as you say, you know, Marion's a good friend of the show and uh, delighted to see, you know, picking up the, the results there for the team. And then also that he was back home in Donegal for the 
ITRC prize giving yeah. as well. Uh-huh. I I think we're definitely going to have to start calling Marianne Wavens. He is yep. he's, he's, he has most of Irish blood running through the veins now at this stage, you know. So hopefully well, I haven't offended them. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, like the honorary Irish man at this stage, yes. definitely. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. And then a bit closer to home that weekend as well, we had Banna Beach, you know. Like Richard Moffat, fine, you know, like the improvement in, in his times, especially in the latter half of the year, has been phenomenal. Uh, he, he run a comfortable one at the finish up, which was great to see. And there was a strong line up there to come, you know, to beat Ryan Locker. And, you know, we all know how fast Ryan is. And a fair fight, like that's, that's, take some doing. Listen, you know, as you say, he was well ahead, like 24 seconds at the at the mm-hmm. finish up between himself and Ryan. And then behind Ryan was the, the, the proton with the Millington engine, like, you know, two quick machines behind Richard. And, you know, that starlet, he, you know, drove the socks off it. That's for sure. That is for sure. So I think we'll uh, we'll catch up with uh, Richard. And um, you know, we'll just ask him how did did it feel one in Bonnet? Yeah, we were we were delighted with the with the outcome. Really, um, we probably hadn't planned really to do to do much more after Wexford earlier in the year. Um, and then when you start to get on a, a bit of a roller, get a bit of form, it's uh, it's tempting to um, to keep at it. So um, we'd never been down to Bonnet Beach before, um, and said we'd go down and. Uh, my navigator from, from all year, Derek Kelly, actually was away. So um, I got on to Jerry Conway, who's local down there, and he said he'd sit on. So that probably didn't do any harm, just in the sense that he was, uh, you know, local and he'd done the rally before and, and so on. Um, and yeah, there was a there was a very good uh, lineup of modified cars, a very good top, strong top 10. Um, Gary Kernan didn't get out, but apart from that, there was Ryan and the two Callahans, um, Connor Murphy. Um, David was there, Jack Newman, and, and a few more coming behind that as well. So you know we knew it'd be um, after the previous two two events that we'd done, which were also very strong uh, lineups. It, it was the same again. Um, the big difference, I suppose, was that it was uh, really getting into winter time at time of year rallying. Um, and I sort of traditionally wouldn't be a big fan of the wet, but we had day two in Wexford very wet and probably learned a bit from that. And Kind of got into my head that I'm just going to have to get on with it when the, when the rain comes down, um, because it's going to be that way. So, um, yeah, it started really, really well for us. Uh, the first stage was funny because we the stage was blocked right after us, so we were uh, fastest of the cars that got through. But then every mind just got our time, so we didn't really uh, get the jump that we might have. Mm-hmm. Um, that 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 time was a, a bit in vain, but um, yeah, we kept at it. Um, Jack Newman was going was going very hard he was um, a couple of seconds ahead of us I think after three stages and he was very close with Ryan behind us um, and he unfortunately slipped off and then it was I think 10 seconds going into the last last couple of stages with Ryan we had in our favour so really stage five then the second last stage was the, the big one where uh, you'd much prefer to have a, a bit of a cushion going into a last stage than you know really have to put it all on the line so I think we took another uh, three or four seconds off him on, on stage five and that left us with a, just enough of a lead that probably he was going to just take her home and, and uh, we were able to do the same so yeah look Ryan was uh, you know Ryan was the leading modified or non Darian modified car in Donegal before he broke down on Sunday so um, you know he'd be be right at the top of the game in terms of modified rally in Ireland and he'd won bottom glass a few weeks previously um, so I know the Callahans uh, both actually uh, retired in the first stage and Connor Murphy had a problem as well so you know unfortunately we didn't um, get the, the full day to, to race against them but like I say Ryan is, is uh, you know possibly the pick of them anyway so to, to go head to head with him and, and have a fair race all day and come out in the right side but we were really delighted Absolutely you know like Ryan Lockhart has to be considered you know, one of the top modified men in the country at the minute like, so to, to take him on in an equal race on you know Questionably, you know, the, your least favourite, you know, the wet surface, no, you know, for some of the people who may have seen that as a, like an advantage to Ryan over yourself, to take that on and beat him, it has to give you great satisfaction. Yeah, de- definitely the, the fact that it was wet probably gave me even more satisfaction, um, just because for me it was probably a bit more of an achievement um, not being that comfortable previously. Um, and even just for, you know, for the rest of the, the team and the lads in service, and we kind of said, Looked at you know getting tire choice better ra- rather than you know, my attitude previously nearly would have been sure when the rain comes on we just try and survive and go home type type of thing um, and I'm not worried about times but um, just put a bit more focus on you know working on getting the setup right in the car and, and trying to build a bit of confidence in it and um, yeah really like when you get all that part of it right like it's it's unbelievable what the car is capable of doing even even in the wet conditions 
Yeah. Um, and you know when you're pushing in those conditions, the, the it's a that more that much more a fine line, you know, and, and um, there's that much more risk of of just having even a simple off. Um, but yeah, we we got to a sort of a comfortable position where we felt we were able to push where we could and um, you know, make good notes and mark where the slippy places and and just sort of find a balance that was uh, obviously a good enough pace. Um, you know, without having without having too many modes. Mm-hmm. And like you talked there about confidence, like your your pace has increased this year, and you you've hit a sweet spot. Do you put that down to confidence, or is that nothing that you can point pinpoint this year? You know, really from goal with somewhere onwards, you've been in the mix every time you've been out. Like, is it something you changed in the car? Is it something you changed in your own preparation, or is it just confidence in your own abilities? No, it did, didn't change anything uh, specifically. Now, uh, probably the big difference is that I've done more rallying this year than um, I've done in a long, long time, probably since 2013, 14. Um, uh, you know, I think 2016 was the first year I took out the the, cla- the 2.5, the class 14 car. Um, but I was living abroad at that point and I was doing a rally here and there. And always could like have some reasonable pace or set a couple of good times or whatever really doing a couple of rallies a year is never going to get you anywhere and um, you know near the sharp end of it um and then this year we we did a bit more and crucially we had really good reliability so we were getting all of the seed rise in we had a couple of issues earlier in the year that probably you know we, we like monaghan we you know felt we could have had a good result we were leading after a couple of stages um and, and had an issue that we got sorted but we still got all the stages in and, and probably built a bit more we got the full weekend of money goal um, and we had a, a decent result but you know still a, still probably um you know a minute or two off the over the weekend off the off the top uh, pace um and then in Galway, maybe a few more suspension tweaks uh, which again when you're out once a year you're really not doing that much because it's very hard to to get a feel of you know what's what's changing and not go back to square one all the time, um and just seem to feel really really comfortable. I've also um you know Dara Kelly's been sitting with me since since we rebuilt that car and really started back at it after after COVID. Um so you know that builds over time as well. I suppose it can it can only help the, the time in the car together. Um and from Galway like we just felt really comfortable. Either. Like I said, people were asking me after Galway what he did differently. Like no, nothing really is the answer. Um just probably got to a place where um you know able to drive at that pace without feeling uncomfortable um and i think that's where you need to be like if you're if you feel like it's on the edge you know to sustain uh what feels like on the edge like it's just not going to work as far as i'm concerned it's eventually going to you know catch you out and um, so for whether it's setup or tires or loads or a combination of all those things and time in the car we seem to be able to get to a place where um you know we were able to Drive at that pace, uh, but feel very comfortable uh, doing it. And um, Wexford was probably the big test. I mean, the, the in Wexford there was Kevin Eves, Gary Kernan, and um, Miko was there, Declan Gallagher, um, and you know when we saw that was after the whole we saw that you know kind of entry. We were keen to it was a real benchmark, you know, um, and we were able to to be quickest on the Saturday in the dry at least. Now I know Kevin. They had the better of us on Sunday in the wet, but um, that's probably when we knew yeah we were at the at the right end of it. And again, like even that Saturday in, in Wexford where we set a good few fastest times and sort of in the mix the the whole day, um, you know, close to fastest if we weren't fastest, it, it still felt very comfortable. It didn't feel reckless or didn't feel like it was wing on a prayer stuff. Um, and I think that's the point that we need to get to to be able to sustain that. Um, and previously, I probably would have done events and thought, I don't know what much more I could do to get on the pace of those boys. Um, and it's just sort of all come together at the end of this year, thankfully. So, um, yeah, I can't, no, no one thing, no, no uh, light bulb moment or anything like that. <laughs> There's no. Yeah, so, <laughs> this uh, is where we did it wrong all along. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah just the combination. <laughs> but we'd work on the, you know, we'd like, I feel like we put a good bit of effort into like recce and we'd record the last loop of the recce and I'd watch it and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, I don't think one of those things will get you 10 seconds of stage, but they all might get you one second of stage and it all adds up, I suppose, eventually. Yeah, like it's all a tenth here, a tenth there. And by, you know, after 14 kilometres, them tenths all add up. And it could be four seconds, it could be, you know, it could be eight seconds. But that's the difference, isn't it? And, you know, it's, we, we don't see that from the outside, but it's the effort that you guys put in before you get to, you know, the start line. All those wee things make a difference at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure, no doubt about it. It's, uh, like I've mentioned, a team effort from, you know, from Navigator and, um you know, right down to the boys in service and setup and like, you know, what the more rallying I'm doing, the more they're learning about, you know, the car and setup and, and, and tires and all that kind of stuff as well. So 
Um, you know, I would, if it was one thing, I was I would put it down. It's it's definitely sit down. Um, yeah, and as, you know, you talked there about the teamwork. You know, you have now the confidence to say, you know, this tire worked, and you know these conditions. You know, I'm confident that that tire will work here now for the next couple of stages. And you know, they're both in that car, they're onto that car. They have the confidence that you'll go and do, you'll bring out the best in the car. So you know, that feeds right down through the team. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, and and like I say, every every time you're doing a, um, the value that we had, I made I'm, in Killarney, I made a mistake on on Mall's Gap, and we just had a very small sort of uh, run off and, and broke a, a a steering arm. It was thankfully minor damage, but apart from that, we um, you know finished every rally we did this year, and that all adds up for 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 the car, for the team, for you know driver, navigator, and, and everything sort of accumulates to I suppose the bit of success that we had in the second half of the year. Yeah. And then, you know, like as well as that, like, you know, your dad hadn't been well there with COVID and everything else over the last couple of years. To get him back in the uh, rally car for Bolton Glass and like to see the enjoyment that man got out of being back in the rally car, uh, you know, it must be like for us spectators watching, that was a fantastic feeling. What was that like as a family to watch your dad? Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, I think he hadn't done, uh, I think he hadn't done anything in five years. Um, and- well, he'd always told us he'd hung up the boots anyway, but um, <laughs> and he'd be very involved, you know, in in in, in myself and David rallying, and, and he'd always be there and, and be very on top of what's going on and so on. But he would have always said that you know he's too old and the pace had passed him by and so on. Um, but he mentioned one night, one day during the summer, that um his license I didn't even know this, but the, his license was uh, almost expired five years, and I think if it if it's five years, then. You have to go back to a, a starter license and back to 1600. So he must have been keeping an eye on the calendar and the rest of the story. So he mentioned that he was uh, he was going to renew it, all oh, just in case. For mm-hmm. so once he said that, we reckoned the uh, yeah he wouldn't need much for a push. So bottom last was was coming up and it was a simple wee rally. And um, it's the same car, you know. He would have drove uh, over all the years, but um, you know, it probably has a few improvements since then and just the small improvements, even in tires that you wouldn't think was a significant change and mm-hmm. suspension and um it has paddle shift now and so on. So he was on about, you know, not using the paddle shift or any of that, but we got him into it and, and uh, he he kind of got used to it enough quick enough and uh yeah he, he had a great day and um he, he thought like well he didn't make a show of himself but obviously the pace has moved on a long way but he felt the car was just um incredible you know what the grip it had and, and all that kind of stuff so Hopefully it'll not be the last time we see him out. Sure, sure. And I love the wee clip of him at the end of one of the stages. He wanted to keep going, like he was just enjoying yeah, it so much. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, well, it's good to have uh, Jason back with him, you know, as yeah. well. Um, they would have done so much rallying over the years. So, mm-hmm. uh, no, he definitely uh, he definitely got uh, some bit of buzz out, out of the day. Anyone, um, hopefully there'll be a few events where he can, which he can uh, dip in and out of next year. He's certainly welcome to take the car in him he wants. <laughs> and, like, you know, the Moffat family is synonymous with Rally in Ireland. You know, we think you, your uncle, your father, your two cousins, you know, like, and the whole Balnode area that you live in, the, you know, the Maguires and all that as well. Like, is it a strong part of the community? Was it all you thought about growing up, or was there football, or was there rugby in the scene, or anything like that, really? Uh, well, I'm probably a bit different to the rest. Um, no, for me, definitely like lots of other things. I wouldn't have been like mad into rallying teenager and like always would have obviously had a passing interest and went along and like enjoyed the bit of speed and did a few quarries and stuff when I was younger. And like I, I was in a rally car when I was 17, which is probably more than a lot of people you know were lucky enough to say. But um, no, I was like mad into rugby and football and um, other sports and um, golf and all kinds of things. So um, the lads would be laughing at me thinking that you could get as much balls out of hitting a golf ball as you would in a rally car but uh, I certainly would at times um, now saying that it was obviously always you know like there was always go-karts and quads and uh, engines and wheels of, of some sort around the house um, but I wouldn't have like you know never typically been like I wouldn't I wouldn't be very like mechanically minded around the car wouldn't have agreed understand probably something that I improved this year getting a little bit of understanding but um, you know, not typical like thinking about you know rallying all week long and and uh working at cars late into the night and so on. Been in the lucky position to have um other people who are able to do that. Um, but I've always loved the the competition. I probably is is number one. Um, and the sort of buzz of um you know competing and and like 
I'd be lying if I said the first thing I, uh, if, I, if I said it wasn't the first thing I looked at was the clock, you know, when we get over the, the, the finish line. Um and obviously the buzz of the of the um the actual adrenaline of the of the speed in the sport as well um, has definitely been uh, has always been a buzz. But like I say, in between it, in between rallies and in between that actual part of it, um I'm probably less so than the rest of the boys, um, like Sam and Josh and David. Um but yeah, it's always been uh, it's always never been a so far away from the uh, uh, from the agenda and the family and Monaghan in general is obviously a bit of a rallying stronghold and uh, the club would have a lot of um, a lot of competitors and a lot of I suppose competitors who are you know quite close to the, to the top of the pace um, so you know that's always good to have and obviously what Sam and Josh have done over the past sort of um, eight ten years um, has been a lot of rallying and a lot of rallying at the very top level so um, you know it's it's been great. Um, and I don't think we'll we'll ever get to that point, but um, no, there's certainly and obviously Sam and Josh have come back now uh, with Sam having the starlet and um, oh look, there's always a bit of crack and a bit of, a bit of chat about it and um yeah we we it's not often we get out on, on exactly the level playing field, but um the laws we a bit of slag and a bit of, a bit of chat about it any time we're together. Yeah, like you know like we've seen Sam as you say they're going back to the starlet this year. Um, you know the way the regulations have changed now, there's you know, the possibility that Sam we could. Put two point five into the start now as well. Like, would you love, you know, the four of you all to get together now, one rally, and you know, put, or even like a stage, just to you know, sort it all out once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, of course, it would. Yeah. Oh, uh, look, people would ask, you know, or even friends who didn't really know that much about rallying would say, oh, you know, who's the fastest or whatever. And, to be honest, like I couldn't, I couldn't answer the question. I'd say at different points in time over the year, we've all had proper patches, and then and then bad, uh, bad days and bad years as well. So, obviously, what Josh did this year, um, you know, was fairly unprecedented. He was pretty much un- untouchable at the sort of highest level of rally in Ireland. And um, Sam did that in twenty eighteen, and um, you know, David has won border championships and national uh, class uh, championships. Um, I've probably never done as much as, as any of them, never done any championships or anything. Um, but yeah, if it was in class 14 and in class 14 startups, I'd like to uh, say I'd have a chance on, on, on my day. Um, maybe someday we'll all get out uh, in, in the same class, but um, I'll look just to be doing some, um, you know, some bit of, of sport is good. Yeah. And like, you know, I, this is the curly from a rally nerd point of view, like the car you're driving, the MSD 222W. Like that car has like a special place in the Irish rally fans' hearts. Like you, you say you're not really into the whole, you know, that side of rallying. But you know, do you? Is there people come up to you still and say, "I remember this car whenever your dad was out in it, or I remember whenever George Robinson was out in it." Like that must be nice to have that history involved with the car. Yeah, I've got, and I would be, you know, fairly. Um, I'd be fairly clued in, and, and, and certainly in that car, maybe, maybe not everyone else's, but um, yeah, the history of right back to George Robinson. I can remember Dad getting the car in um, in 04, um, when it was, you know, very rare at that point. Uh, certainly a starlet, and even you know, two point four or two point five class fourteen car was sort of it was him and Enda Keenan, and um, you know, it wasn't such a big thing. And obviously now everyone's sort of um gone that way. Um, so it is nice to have that bit of history, um, you know, attached to the car and still have that um, number plate on it and sort of. See it evolve through the um you know with the technology that's kind of evolved over the years um and yeah we'll get a lot of people you know that would come over and, and know the car from before remember that and probably or um even sometimes back as i think it won the national championship in 1984 i think in, G- in G- uh, George mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. um yeah there's there's a uh, you know there's a lot of history out and oh, yeah like i love the car spot probably even more so after this year but um I've never driven a Mark II or never really driven much else. Um, but it's certainly, you know, I think there's other people out there, well, Jason Black and Declan Gallagher. It's, it's sort of proven at this stage that, um, you know, a starlet can be fully competitive right at the, the top end of modified rallying. So um, I certainly wouldn't be, I wouldn't be jumping into Mark II any, anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, you know, I've, I've talked to other drivers, you know, in that class book team, they say there's nothing like, you know, the, the sheer brutality over like a 2.5 car like does it still give you a buzz every time you step into that car yeah oh like no doubt about it it would give you a buzz the one thing I, I would say is that and I think it's probably part of what I was saying earlier about, about getting comfortable you know I can remember in the early days of driving I probably moving up from class 13 and not being out that regularly and you know just felt vicious like you really couldn't believe it every every time you get into it 
but I think the longer you drive it, the more comfortable you become, you know, with that with that power and that speed. Um, and it's probably only once you, you know, once you stop, uh, sort of been blown away by the power of it, that you can start to, you know, get comfortable and, um, you know, like we, we, I would always say, like the thing with a, a class fourteen car, like you just get to a hundred miles an hour so quickly all all the time, um, and you know if you're not comfortable when you get to it then like you're you're, you're not going to be at anything so i think probably you know seat time does allow you to sort of just that becomes a bit more normal and um you know you know that the the rest of the car is built safely enough and the brakes are good enough and the gearbox is good enough to, to cope with that power sort of alongside it um but yeah there's probably you know i think anyone who said there's probably nothing like a like a class 14 car um I haven't really driven much um at the at the uh, top end of of homologated rally like a North Five bar or anything, but coming up through class eleven and thirteen and into fourteen, um, it'd be hard to go back down there. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, sure. And like we touched on this earlier, like rallying's not just you know you or you and you know Dara or whoever's in the car with you. It's the whole team effort. You know, it's the mechanics. It's you know, it's the prep that goes into the car. You know, weeks, days in advance of the rally. It, those guys that you have there, they're turning you at car that's giving you that confidence to go that 100 mile there, you know, they, they're vital in this this sport as much as the drivers. Oh, ma- massively so. Uh, and like I said, we're really lucky to have uh, a great team of lads there who, who work at the car both in between events and, and on events. Um, you know, it starts probably with dad, really, who, who sort of gives us the opportunity to um, get into the sport and, and you know, sort of evolved the cars like I say over time and then the cars run by MS Motorsport with Mark Sp- uh, Smith and, and, and Jerry Buckley um, and then Jimmy Lee um, BD helps out on events as well and like I say we've done well, I'm not sure maybe eight events eight or nine events since uh, in the cat in sort of the 12 months since this time last year um, and we've finished every one of them and, and like I say just my one mistake that I made myself in, in Killarney um you know, was the only event that I didn't finish. So, you know, to have that reliability, you know, it, it doesn't happen by accident. Um, you know, there's a lot of thought goes into preparation and, and making sure that things are replaced when they need to be. And then even when there has been on occasion been um, issues on events, we had an issue in Wexford and it's all hands to the pump, you know, to, to, to get us going. And, um, you know, I think the, the boys are, are invested in it as well in terms of, you know, wanting to win. And um, it, it means more to them when there's, some kind of success, you know, at the at the end of the weekend. So um glad I've been able to sort of do that in the second half of the year. And then um I suppose the other thing is is uh well first of all, David and Martin obviously are doing most of the same events as us. So, you know, between the two of them and myself and Dara, like we'd be in contact a lot and looking at in cars and and you know, sort of pushing each other on as much as we can. Um and then Dara, like I say, has sat on all year. Um or since since we sort of uh, took the car back out after COVID, like I said, and um, been flawless from the start. But it, you know, even being flawless, it probably takes a bit of time to build the relationship. You know, and I get more comfortable, get more comfortable with each other, and he starts to understand, you know, the way I drive or whatever it might be, and vice versa. And um, so, you know, that's definitely been a, a work in progress, and got to a, a point where it can be competitive as well. And then, uh, obviously, like you mentioned, Jer sat on in 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 Vanna Beach, so. Um, you know, it, didn't, it certainly didn't hold us back. Uh, he's, uh, you know, sat in some very, uh, very quick seats. So yeah, mm-hmm. I knew that wasn't going to be a problem for him anyway. And I think he's, uh, I think he's won the national in, in the lakes, the national in the historics, the historics itself, and now Banner Beach. So he was saying he just needs to win the, the international in the lakes. And then as a Killarney man, he'll have the whole, he'll have the whole lot. <laughs> yeah, the Paul Nagel knocking down his door if he tries that. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> And like for yourself, then, um, you know, do you want to keep this r- rich run, uh, being a form running? Like, do you, you know, will you go to Killarney or will that do you now for this year? What's your thoughts then? Yeah, well, that's us done for this year. I, I actually have a wedding uh, the weekend of Killarney, my cousin's wedding to go to. So I'm almost glad that I can't be tempted <laughs> into that as well. Um, so definitely won't be out again this year. Um, obviously, we'd love to, you know, we'd love to pick up where, where we left off uh, next year. Um, know that that just won't be it'll be easier said than done but it'll be it'd be nice to get uh, sort of be back in the mix and uh, whenever we do get back out the way the calendar falls that'll probably be march and to be honest we don't have any you know major plan it'll depend on a lot of things we might try and look at raising a bit of sponsorship or a bit of a budget ahead of next year as well because um you know it's not easy to um especially when you're you know in class 14 or whatever um you know everything just costs a bit more tires and everything so um it'll depend on a lot of things but uh, 
I guess I'd say I'll probably not do a championship, but pick sort of select events um, and, you know, try and sort of be on the pace at the right times. And look, above all, it's about, it's about enjoying it and, you know, whatever else is going on and you have to work around uh, other people's you know, schedules and all that. So it's not something that's not going to be like, you know, I'm not going to take over my life and do two championships and not go and uh, do anything else or miss out on other social events. So look, I'll, I'll dip in where I can and probably do, you know, six or seven or eight rallies next year, all being well if, if things go good. Um, and to be honest, personally, I'd probably be more interested in, in picking up sort of individual, you know, either class wins or, or be involved at least in good battles or whatever mm-hmm. um, than sort of the pressure of a championship and having to drive for, you know. Like with um, points in the back of your head, like trying to yeah, all, all that kind of stuff. Subject, so, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very different and I've never done it and, and you know, it obviously takes um, a lot of effort and a lot of uh, skill to, to be able to, you know, put a championship run together. But um, like I say, just with the time commitment of it is one thing with work and, and everything else. Um, and, and like I say, I'm, I'm probably, you know, just happy sort of taking a, uh, event by event basis and, and uh, just see what you can do on one particular event without the thought of everything else in your head so uh, no major plan yet um, the calendar is funny because Monaghan is not an event next uh, it's mm-hmm. off the calendar next year so that'll be a, a first for us uh, so we'll have to take a look and, and see um, you know we'll probably try and get to Donegal and I'll definitely try and go back to Banna because we'll have the, the honour of having number one on the door there so um, yeah we'll work it around those and we'll, we'll hopefully get out all being well for um, six or seven events anyway you know, with this, the whole thing behind this podcast is always going to celebrate what's so good about Irish Rally. And like two guys that's had a phenomenal year is Michael McDade and Declan Casey in their historic Mark II. Um, you know, they've had, between the British Forest and the Irish Tarmac, they've had a great year. And the list of silverware they've collected is something else. But, you know, there's no point in me telling you all about it. We'll hear from the two guys. Uh, we just wanted to try the English Forest. Um, I, I've been speaking to a couple of lads. Um, I know the Bard lads were always going away to Wales. I would be friendly with, with Raymond Ormack, who does the service in the car, would have built a couple of cars for them boys. And right. they're always talking about these stages, the fantastic stages they were in Wales and England. So I suppose we wanted to try it. Mm-hmm. Um, what better way to try it was in a BDG, like, <laughs> roaring through the woods. It's, uh, <laughs> And, um, and obviously, the, there's some seriously famous stages over there. Um, they're very fast. They're very flowing. Last year, we only went over and done four or five events. It was all a learning curve for us. Like. Mm-hmm. We didn't think we'd even be competitive, but I suppose we weren't really at the start. But then, you know yourself, with a bit of experience, this year we've had a really good run of it. Like. And, like, uh, you know, is, is seat time vital? Like, is that, you know, is that give you the confidence then for, to go this year and to be able to push on that wee bit more? Most definitely. But it took it took last year maybe five of them, five events to actually just, I suppose, to get familiar with the car, getting familiar with how to take certain corners. And, you know, same as tar, like, the more seat time you get, the, the more you can improve and learn. And every day I'm still learning. Like mm-hmm. We went out this year and we, we say every stage, like, you know, there's things that we've learned and you're... You're able to come back and look at the footage again and say, well, I know where it went wrong there. You're making mistakes every day, but you're obviously improving every day as well. And Declan, from your point of view, you know, you talk about learning there and all, like every day is a school day. And like, do you find that even, you know, on the cool driver side of things, that you're always finding new ways to improve, new ways to make things better? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, like, as Michael said there, the first year we went over, we were kind of, every stage was brand new to us and we were finding our feet timing is slightly different over there and so the first year we were just getting a bit of experience and getting used to the new ground and then this year when we start going back to some of the events that we did already last year we can see already that we're making massive improvements just familiarity with the stages and familiarity with the whole setup over there and um, yeah we had a really good year this year yeah and, you know, you know uh, Michael talked about those famous stages. You know, you competed in some of the stages, you know, old RAC classics, you know, names that we used to watch and, you know, Top Gear, you know, the, the RAC specials back in the day. Like, how special is it for likes of, for yourself to sit on the start line of, say, a Radner or a Kilder or whatever? Oh, it's unreal. It's, it's like you're, you're pinching yourself. We, I don't think we realise until we come home. How famous they actually were! Like, I mean, you're you're kind of in the in the bubble at the time, and it's you're just doing. I'm doing my job, and he's doing his job, and we're trying to get to the end as fast as we can. But no, you don't get lost. Let me do that. But 
It's when you come home and you and you watch Dean Carr and you might compare it to somebody else and you're saying, "Wow, that was a that was that was a good event. That was some some great stages there," you know. And like Michael, this year you you started and you you know it was a two pronged approach. You were doing the first you know the B B T R D A Championship and the Irish Tarmac Championship was. Like, was it a kind of suck it and see how you get on? Aye, how, absolutely. <laughs> we just sort of look at, we'll enter the two champions and see how we get on. We were very unfortunate. We we had three non-finishes in the tower. We were very unlucky. We were like, we never, this year we didn't, Um, sorry, we, we had, we finished every every forest event. But like three out of the four tarmac events we went to do, we didn't get started. Like we went to Killarney Historics. We had a good run up the gap. And then the fourth stage, which was the second run up the gap, the engine went, you know. And then we got her fixed and we got her uh, obviously rebuilt and we came back over to do cork and then something jammed there, there's a wee spring jammed in the carburetor and she filled the clock so then she had to be sent back again and get looked at again and and then we went to west cork or was it cork 20 which was the second one yeah but, donegal donegal after west cork for us donegal sorry we had a good run donegal we finished second overall like, so we're very happy with that 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 uh, was very great stage. Donegal and Clarny, probably two, and Cork. Can't forget the Cork Man's rally. Like <laughs> it's probably, probably three best rallies in Ireland. Like, but yes, we didn't have the luck. Just as suppose you're going to get that. And like, isn't it amazing? Just the, the way your your luck can flip. You know, you you could hardly put a wheel wrong on the, the gravel this year, and then the tower ever and just yeah. didn't fall your way. Uh, that, that's it. It's just the luck of the draw. But uh, look, next year we'll live it or lash. And if we're allowed to go to, to more events than we should, we probably will. But you know yourself, we have to get the wee green card for a couple of them. Like. Yeah, <laughs> get the card stamped. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Declan, from your point of view, you know, you're a historic man now through and through. You know, you, you're involved in the championship here in Ireland. You know? We keep hearing about how friendly the, you know, the, that championship is. Like, is it as good as everybody says? I think it is. Um, I think you've got a you've got a gang of people there that are just watching everyone's back. We had a, a situation there this year in the Cork Twenty, for example, when when Duncan Williams came into service for a, a clutch replacement, and three or four crews appeared out of nowhere from historic competitors. Uh, us being one of them because they had nothing else to do, and um, they all jumped in under the car and got it done in record time, and everyone was in. It, it, it wasn't even a job in the finish. It was everybody was was sharing it out, and it just made the whole thing that much easier. We got Duncan back in, um, and that was him sorted. You know, but it would have been the same for anyone else. Like everybody is just so friendly. Everybody wants everybody to get on. There's no backstabbing, or there's nobody hiding anything. Everybody is up front of everything. We're checking the times, and they're super super close in the historics at the moment, and, and it, it just makes for fantastic rally. You just can't wait for the next day you can get out. And like Michael, from your point of view, I'm sure you don't mind me saying, you're not waiting on Malcolm Wilson ringing you on the Monday after the rally. Rallying for you <laughs> is a release from work. It's a way of switching off. Like to go I... and have that friendship and the bat the banter and the bit of crack, it must make it so much easier. I well, there's not really much pressure. You know, you're not uh, you're going as a man says it's a great way of spending a few pounds, you know. <laughs> 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 but no, it's a great old, there's a great old buzz. Um, you go down. I suppose the tarmac is different in terms of that you have to go and recce, and if it's a two day rally, it's a day and a half nearly of recce, and so you kind of you're not trying to do too many of them events, but you'd like to do enough if you want to do the championship. But the, the the beauty of the gravel is, I know it is over the them ones were over to Wales, um, whereas you go over the Friday morning you, at eight o'clock boat, and you're back on the Saturday night, at, you know, at midnight or two o'clock latest, like so you're no more than two days away. Um, obviously, I'd like to do a couple of Irish rounds, but some of them this year just seem to clash. Like, because there's some great forests down around Cork that, that I've been told about, and I haven't done any of them. The only thing I won't have done is um, the Bushwhacker in Oma last year, mm -hmm. which yeah. is a great rally too. Like. That's for sure. That is for sure. And like, what a year you've had in the, you know, the in the, the you know them British forests. Like, Declan, do you want to tell, give us a rundown of, of you know like, the amount of silverware that you're going to have at the end of the year? Well, I suppose if we look at the Irish Tarmac first, Michael started four events. I started seven. Um, Michael finished up third overall in the class, and I won the class category three, which would be for the Mark 2 BDs. Um, I sat with Hugh McQuaid in Ulster 
I sat with Duncan Williams in Galway and I sat with Todd Falvey in Killarney. Um, two out of three of those managed to finish that rally. Gave me a good few points for the championship and Michael topped it up to give me the first in class. So I was very happy with that. Um, if we move over to the UK for the BTRDA, um, we weren't really looking at the BTRDA when we started off. But what happens is when you're doing the Welsh Championship, there's a lot of events that are they're falling into two championships. So it turned out halfway through the year that we were actually looking quite good for the BTRDA as well as the Welsh. So we decided to maybe throw a rally into that pot as well to try and bring that up. So we finished up, I think, um, in the two-wheel drive side of it, which is the Silver Star, they call it over there. Mm -hmm. um, we had two wins, two seconds and a third, which means that both myself and Michael finished third overall in the Silver Star. And then in the historic side of it, we both finished second overall in the historic cup. Um, so that was that was the kind of one we weren't even looking at until later on in the year, but it, it kind of cropped its head up. And we did have a chance to win it in the Cambrian just the weekend before last. But the man that was winning it had more events done than we had. So we kind of missed the boat a small bit there. But we did we couldn't do a whole pile of boating, to be honest, because we were doing as much as we could get away with, as Michael mentioned earlier. You have to be careful how many times we go across the water. But... We move on to the Welsh then. The Welsh was probably our most successful um, championship. Um, we both placed first in the, the big historic class called W8. Um, you're in there with the likes of Matt, Matt, um, Matt Edwards and, and all these guys that are over there with the years. So we were delighted to come out with that. And um, I think there's a, a Welsh challenge section in that as well. I think I was second in that. And I think Michael was fourth, but Again, very, 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 very tough competitors in, in, in both of those, you know. So we're, we're very happy with how things went. We, we finished every gravel rally we started this year. So we just need to get the tarmac. <laughs> and we're, we're, we'll be happier again. And, like, Michael, from your point of view, yes, you want to be competitive enough, but like, that has to exceed your expectations of what you, you know, we started out last February heading over to Wales for the first event. Did you ever imagine that you would come back with so much silverware at the end of the year? No, definitely not. If, uh, we we just we thought we'd go out here and have a bit of crack and see how we get on. And obviously we didn't get any silverware last year because we were just learning the whole thing. But this year, no, we've improved every rally. To be fair, you know we had a really good result in the plains earlier this year. Um, I can't remember where we were. It was the third or fourth overall car. Or yeah, car. I think we were, we were second to wheel drive, and I think we were fifth or sixth overall in the rally. So it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it's just, I suppose, yeah, if you get a few events under your wings, it helps, like, and then just get a wee bit braver and hopefully you take the foot down, you know, <laughs> you get around that corner. <laughs> and, like, you know, we know from, you know, like rallying here in Ireland, like the Millingtons and all that, but there's nothing really to beat the, the sound of a BDG at full revs through a forest. Like, to be inside, listening to that song, it must give you some buzz, can, you know, as hard as you can go down a forest and getting it right. It's actually pretty amazing. I see, you, you don't really hear it, obviously, because you've got the earphones on and the muffle, but you can hear it, then boys send you videos of it, and you're like, it makes the hair stand on your neck, you know? Um, and then the power and the torque that the cars have is pretty amazing. You know, they're not the 300 horsepower, as you said, uh, 2 liter 16 valves, like, but they're still 265 horsepower. The torque's really good. They pull well. You know, they do go hard, and if you've, if you're brave enough, you'll you'll do well in the forest. Like. Mm -hmm. But great to hard to go, like, and then the boys just love it. See anyone spectating? We would out and watch a stage. Sometimes you go out if you get a chance and watch a stage, and it's it's it is it's class just to hear that roar going up the, and the echo. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't sound the same on the tower, like. No. You know, when you have the thing going through the trees, it just it's, it's mad, like. Mm -hmm. even think about it now and like Declan you know you as I said earlier you are a Mr Historic in Ireland like the, you know the British Championship that BTRDA Championship is it as friendly and as welcome and, and the Welsh as well as the Irish as well you know were you guys welcomed over there with open arms yeah well I suppose the first year we went over we were kind of keeping our head to ourselves and we, we weren't doing a whole pile of mixing now we knew a few we knew a few fellas in our service crew would have known a few crews from previous years. But this year, in fairness, lots of guys coming over wishing us well and to know you're after really coming on up the ranks and, and, and wishing us the best. And like it's just pure again familiarity. You're meeting the same guys at the start of the stage, you get out and you're 
getting ready for the start of the stage. You have a few words and what did how did you get on in the last one and what tires are you using and what pressures are you on? And in fairness, they're very happy to share information and they're very glad to see us over and 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 we're very happy to 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 take part. Mm-hmm. And uh, the crack is good, yeah. The crack is good. And like, it's nice to see that reciprocate that you know we think that the amount of Welsh guys that's come over and doing the Turnwhite Championship as well. So it, you know, it works both ways. It's a it gets a two way street that. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And even last last weekend we were in Letterkenny for the, the Tarmac Awards. And there was as many Welsh there was as many Welsh prize winners up there for the historics as there was Irish prize winners as well, which is fantastic to see. And they're they're great characters and they're they're great for a, a good night out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then, Michael, from your point of view, you know, you talked earlier about the team effort. You know, it's not just you know the two headers and, and the car. It's like you know, it's it's the why we spike at home that let, giving you that time away. It's you know the people that work, even you know that you know your your business is a safe hands, and then the guys that's prepping the car. Everybody plays a part in this sport as well, don't they? I absolutely. And Raymond, who's our Mike Motorsport, who built the car actually, and would I mean he takes the car away every time. We do a rally, and he takes out. You know, he does basically. Well, he doesn't strip her down completely, but I mean, takes the diff out and gives her an overall check and gives her a very thorough check. And to be fair, this year the car has been faultlessly. You cannot beat that. And then we have Noel and Mark, the two guys that come with us, and uh, they're they're in the van and they, ser- they do the service on the day. And and as you said, the waves, which is probably the most important link of the whole thing. <laughs> they keep they give us permission. <laughs> Maybe they're glad to see us for away for a bit of peace. Yeah, didn't want to say that, but <laughs> well, we have to keep reminding them that that's why they let us go, you know, because they want peace. <laughs> and, and Declan, you know, to get that time away, to be able to concentrate on doing a rally and not letting all the other, you know, other small stuff sort of get in the way for the weekend, that's very uh, you know, vital for your role as well. It is, yeah, and and I suppose what a lot of people don't realise is. When you're going over to the UK to do an event that you've never done before and, and, and there's no Ricky the day before, so you're, you're working off of a DVD and a set of notes and myself and Michael might send a, a few videos over back to try and get them as good as we can before we go over and then we might get another look at them on the board because we've a bit of time to kill. And it all adds up, you know, there's a lot of time involved in that as well. But it seems to be going it seems to be going fairly well for us at the moment anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing what we're doing. And... Um, We'll, we'll try and keep the pace up as best we can and hopefully we'll get a, a few more tarmac finishes this year if possible <laughs> yeah but the tarmac rounds as well like i mean there's a lot of work goes into the prep and those as well like a, a day and a half or a two-day recce there for a, a two-day rally is it's a, it's a huge commitment because you're talking two weekends away really you know to do one rally mm-hmm. so at least when we go to the uk uh, as michael mentioned earlier you go friday morning you come back saturday at midnight and you're home again Sunday for the day, you know. So it's not it's not so bad. Yeah. And we know how expensive a sport rally is with tires and ever you know all all those things. Sponsorship is vital too, and like to have you know somebody prepared to give you a few quid to help you know spread the cost. You know you have to be thankful for that there, Michael. I'm sure every you know if there's anybody out there that wants to give you a few quid that help you buy a few tires get some fuel you'll be more than welcome to receive a call or a message or whatever oh, geez, absolutely <laughs> i was very i've been very grateful there's a few guys that have get there was red rock and, and state solutions is a guy that owns that this james rooney and uh, he he's been very good to me there this last two years now and obviously mcdade's chemist <laughs> <laughs> can't forget them James plug. <laughs> so i have to keep the pushing the pedals as much as yes <laughs> For sure, for sure. So, you know, looking ahead now, you know, Tarmac Championship is going to be starting up again now in a few weeks, Clarny um, Historic. Do you see yourself heading down there or is that you finish for the year now? Oh, no, I think, I mean, Clarny Historic is probably one of the biggest rallies of the year. So if you've got a BDA, that's the place to be, like, mm-hmm. or BDG. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I'd and, be looking forward to it, like. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we've seen how well developed the tarmac, the historic uh, part of the tarmac championship has come on this last few years, and like he's already announced a sponsor for next year. The championship seems to go on from strength to strength. Yeah, there seems to be a big momentum at the moment for the historic championship. Um, even talking to a few lads again at the prize giving last weekend, um, there seems to be a lot of people who are moving on from the modified classes and starting to build historic cars. Um, I don't know. 
I suppose you couldn't really say that they're that much cheaper. But there, there seems to be a there seems to be a lot of people interested in the historic side of it at the moment, and they're they're having a good look at it. Um, they're selling their modified cars and building historic cars, and they're going to give it a go and see. Like it is good crack. The racing is as close as as you'll ever get. I think there was one stage in Donegal last year. There was eight cars within five seconds of each other after. 12 or 14 miles. I mean, it's yeah. it's absolutely unbelievable. Like, And that's exactly what you want. You want to be fighting for every second. So I suppose there's a bit of a draw that way. Like, the other side of it then is it mightn't be as expensive to run a, a BDG car as, as, as run a class 13 or 14 car. You know, maybe there's, maybe there's a bit involved in that. Um, plus the fact that you're not doing, for example, three days of Donegal, you're doing two or... You might be doing a day and a half in West Cork instead of two full days. and Maybe that suits people a bit better too. You have a shorter rake again, shorter time spent. And sure, look, it all adds up at the end of the day. But if anybody wants to come over to the dark historic side, we're, we're more than welcome to take you. <laughs> Even if you only wanted to try it out for one event just to see how you'd get on, to know that we had a couple of modified guys there now towards the end of the year, try the historic car. Obviously loved it because they're staying with us now for next year. But um, I t- I'm expecting uh, I'm expecting a lot of new cars in Killarney, and I hope that um, I hope that a lot of them will sign up for the championship, and we'll make it bigger and better next year. For sure, for sure. And then, Michael, to wrap things up, like you know, uh, Declan said there about you know coming off a stage, you know, fourteen kilometer stage, and five se- separating you know five or six guys. For you to be in the middle of that, does that give you a, a, a such an adrenaline buzz to be? to feel that, you know, that how close that competition is to be involved in that. Like, is it is it magical to be in the middle of all that? That's what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Oh, it definitely is. Aye. It's a great feeling. Great buzz. And then, you know, you're getting out at the end of the stages and you're shaking hands with the boys before and saying, well, obviously you're taking the same to the boys, take it home, boys. You know, we all want to be, you want to drive safe. You want to drive as hard as you can, but as safe as you can. But, you know, it's all, it's good. That's part of the fun, like. Yeah, you, you, know? you know how hard you've driven on that stage. So you appreciate, you know, if somebody can yes. who gets closer, beat you by a second, yes, you're disappointed you've lost a second somewhere, but, you know, you know they have laid it on the line the same as you have. Aye. Absolutely. I mean, there's, it's a fine, it's a very fine line, as I say, you know. <laughs> and it's amazing how you can, like, lose time in one place and gain it in another. And it's all how the cars sometimes, even the, the, the ratios and the diffs and all that. But the good, the, one of the good things you mentioned about the, I suppose, the historic is that you know there's only so much you can do with the historic yards, and they're nearly all on a level playing field. You know, they nearly they can't go any more than the BDA, and then that you know, and there's yeah. maximum because it's an older technology of an engine, they, they can't really they can't go to 300 like they're at around the 265 hours, mm-hmm. um, and that's where they're at, you know, it gives it's more level playing field, like, yeah. or some of the modifieds, you know. To do the whole extreme, some of them like, <laughs> mm-hmm. and and Declan, we'll finish up with yourself. Like that, you know, historic rallying has been sort of probably the the hidden gem of, of rallying. It's great to see it finally getting its place and and getting recognised for what it truly is over the last few years. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of momentum there now. In the last twenty four months, I suppose things have really picked up, you know. And um, I think again, it's it's the it's the competitiveness of the competitors. It's the camaraderie. It's the everybody seems to get on very well. Not saying that they don't get on in other categories. Like I, I've I've been in class thirteen. I've been in class twelve with Michael, and I, class twelve was absolutely fantastic as well because the Pinto class again. There's only so much you can do with the car, but I think it's the close racing. It's the fact that everybody is so friendly. I think you can pick up the phone there and you can have a chat with any one of your competitors. We have a. A very active WhatsApp group at the moment, which is alive, coming up to Killarney now. Everybody is, is <laughs> looking for nuggets of information and what's this fella doing and what that fella, what tires is he running and what pressures is he in. It's it, it's fantastic to be part of and long may it continue. So Kevin, there was a fantastic auction in Sotheby's at the weekend. It was part of the Gran Turismo Group B collection. Uh, was up for auction. Um, there was a. Uh, Lancey 037, the Delta S4, and then the, the Quattro S1 Evolution 2. And they went for some ridiculous money. Uh, the, the cars looked absolutely phenomenal. 
Uh, but prior to the auction, I don't know if people had seen on the social media, there was a lovely little video put out um, of the cars being put through their paces. And it was actually Ryan Champion was was driving the three cars and you had a chance to catch up with him to chat all things rallying. Uh, delighted now to be joined by Ryan Champion. I don't know how to introduce you, Ryan, as RAC winner, uh, Safari Rally winner, driver extraordinaire, but whatever you want to call yourself, you're very welcome along. <laughs> uh, just an old grey head driver who's been around for a while, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, it's something you're still glad to be rallying, I think. Yeah, like, and isn't it great that you've, you've, you've kept so busy in rallying like 20 years now, and as it now, maybe more? Uh, 30. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I actually did the track road rally uh, 30 years ago was my first stage event, and that was driving. I co-driven for a couple of years before that. So, um, yeah, been around, you know, around rallying a long time. And, yeah, like you said, it's just nice still to be involved. Um and quite regularly involved. All right, I maybe yeah. don't compete as much as I'd like to anymore, but um, still heavily involved and, and still get to drive um, some pretty cool cars. Yeah, and that's I thought that's why we have you on here. Um, we've seen recently Sotheby's with having the Gran Turismo collection for sale, and three A cars really caught the eye, and you got an opportunity to drive them to showcase them before the the auction. Yeah, that's right. Sotheby's wanted to do a little uh, sort of promotional film for the for the cars before the the auction, and uh, so I was uh, I was lucky to get the the phone call to um, to drive the cars, um, and and just you know lovely lovely chance to to drive three iconic Group B cars, um, and uh, if Kerbera the the test venue, it's only quite a small. A tarmac test venue you know on really in, in england now it's quite hard to get tarmac venues just to mm-hmm. to shake a car down like that you know the the circuits are really expensive um obviously uh closing a road isn't a, an option on a daily basis so uh little venues like kerbera get quite a lot of use for that kind of thing and uh well but the good thing is while whilst it's very small it is uh, quite a good little place to be able to to throw a car around in relative safety, you know, when it's uh, a one and a half million pound car or whatever, then uh, <laughs> you don't want to go you, too uh, well. <laughs> no, you you want to try and look after it a bit as well, and and a forty year old one and a half million pound car that was uh, that was deemed too dangerous in period, and uh, they haven't got safer. No. And like, you know, you're like a similar age group to myself. Like these were the cars that whenever we were young, we had pictures up on our bedroom wall. This was like boyhood dreams like to you know to step out and see these lined up and you're going to get the opportunity to drive them did you have to kind of pinch yourself almost uh, the s4 particularly um i've been lucky enough to drive a quattro on a couple of occasions um so i kind of knew what what i would be getting there even though i haven't driven an s1 e2 i've driven a sport quattro and you know that it's just going to all come in with a bang and then you're going to change gear and it'll all happen again but the s4 was probably the one, two things. It was a Toivonen car mm-hmm. and it's a Lancia Delta S4. You know, one of the, I don't know, maybe looked at as the most dangerous rally car ever. I don't know. You know, yeah, it's probably up there anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, obviously with with what happened to, to Toivonen in Corsica, it, you know, it, it, it does have a reputation. And um, so that was slightly intimidating. But, but funnily enough, ironically, exactly the same place. I drove a Stratos a couple of years back. And it was a similar, a similar feeling getting into a Stratos. It was just like, Ooh, what's this going to be like? And and the Stratos was lovely, um, really nice balance, easier to drive than I thought. Um, and and the S4 wasn't so dissimilar. You know, you, you jumped in it, and actually, the gear change was nice. The steering was nice. Um, the yeah, the steering was was quite quite precise on it. The balance of it was good. Um, you just had to get some heat in the tyres. I mean, to be honest, I, I was weaving a bit to warm the tyres up. And I, I nearly spun it warming the tyres up because they just <laughs> had absolutely no grip, like nothing. Um, but once there was some heat in the tyres, it was it was quite nice. And uh, and to contrast it to the Quattro, where you know you do have this massive off boost lag, and then and then bang, and then it revs, and then you change gear, and, and then you repeat the cycle. But obviously. The whole point of the S4 in period was having the supercharger as well, that that it was responsive low down. And um, 
I drove the 037 first of all. And again, it was, I've been lucky enough to drive quite a lot of different cars over the years, but the Lancias have all come quite recently. And, and funnily enough, now a Stratos, an 037 and a, mm-hmm. an F4. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> as, you, as you do when you think yeah. about it. And, and yeah, you know, I've been very lucky to, to experience these cars. But um, the 037 was lovely and, and, and very much maybe what you'd expect, you know, like a, it felt lightweight. It, it felt like a, a tarmac racer, if you like. No power steering in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and responsive with a with supercharger, but then just dropped off a bit more top end. So you get into the, the S4. Uh, and like I said, the first thing is it's power steering, so it's not physical. Um, it's got turning. It's got throttle response. Uh, but then you've got top end power as well. Um, but it, it was quite funny that day. The photographer, or the 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 Tomley guy filming, said, um, "Can you can you just see how sideways you can get the S4 just coming out of that hairpin?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> if <you're> just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's the worst that can happen?" Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's a little bit edgy on the limit, I have to say, but um, but not. Yeah, not horrendous, you know, just like you just, it, you could just feel it just would grip up quite quickly on mm-hmm. on slicks. But um, yeah, like I said, I, I have to say I was very, very pleasantly su- surprised by how easy that car was to drive. Mm-hmm. Um, the, as I said, the 037, it, it, it was more or less what I expected. The Quattro, you kind of know what you're getting into, but the, but the S4 was very much um, a surprise, really. Yeah, and the, did you almost feel Toyvan S stepping into it. Like, was, it, was that all playing through your head? Like the, no. the top gear thing chin going on? <laughs> no, but I, I did walk into it. I did honestly just tell myself it's just a car. Right. Because you're getting into Toyvan's Monte Carlo winning yeah. Delta S4. I mean, ironically, the Quattro went for more money. You know, there was more interest around the Quattro, but for me, of the two cars, you know, the uh, a Toivonen car, Monty winner and an S4, it, it, yeah, it, it, you know, in his seat with his name on it, which, you know, I think they were all, all genuine seats and everything in it. Um, yeah, I did. I, I genuinely did. I just walked to it, walked straight to it, thought it's just a car, fired it up, drove it off without trying to... <laughs> Overbank it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> and the, in reality, the, you know, the, 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 the quarter with 1.8 million uh, the, the Delta S4 like 1.6 million it's an obscene amount of money but if you had that kind of money spare it would be nice to be going and have something like that in your collection yeah I mean it, it, yeah like you said it's it's huge money but then group the interest around Group B cars has been massive for a long time and um, you know in comparison to some of the rare race cars they're, they're still seen as by some of the collectors, um, obviously not by us, but by some <laughs> of the collectors, they're still seen as relatively cheap by mm-hmm. comparison. And, and, you know, people can get an invite to the Goodwood Festival of Speed and such like with rally cars. And that's why, particularly on the rally stage, you know, you, you see all sorts of weird and wonderful things on the rally stage because people are getting an invite to Goodwood in a, you know, a, sometimes in a relatively cheap rally car. Mm-hmm. Um, now, obviously they're not cheap, but in terms of running up the hill at Goodwood, for example, you know, you, they aren't cheap cars, any of them no. run up the hill at Goodwood. So mm-hmm. it, it it does open the door to some people to like a fairly elite club and to others they'll just become a yeah museum piece. But yeah, hopefully they'll they'll they'll, they'll be used and uh, you know they'll be seen in uh in, in some kind of events because it's always nice to see these these cars out running. Um I mean having said that how how people do run them at like to rally legend and, and run them yeah. properly for yes. a extended period. I mean that's a that's a, a different whole, ball game that. ball game is right, yeah. Like you know, to, you think like a, a gearbox chasing or something like that for a, a, a Delta S4. Like it's not never mind can you afford to buy it. It's getting one never mind. I don't know, so. Yeah and, and and obviously the 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 big risk with those is well with any rally car is fire. Mm-hmm. And um obviously you can replace the mechanical bits but you do unfortunately see it you did in period you know the fires with those cars mm-hmm. and there's a lot of flammable stuff in there and uh, yeah that that would be my worry if i owned one of them running yeah. it <laughs> yeah. you know, out to give it a wee pot every day again <laughs> yes. yeah 
And then, you know, with something else that's very close to your heart, we could talk about rallying, is rallying with Down syndrome. Yourself, Danny McMinn and John, uh, John Stone was the sort of, like, the, the forefathers of this. Like, uh, for, for a great idea, it took off, and it has really helped you raise awareness. Uh, you couldn't have asked for better, really, could you? No, it's it's been great, really. Um, and and not only you know not only the way it's raised awareness, but the way people wanted to get on board with it as well. And um, people asking for stickers, groups, clubs, whatever, asking for the the rally for Down syndrome stickers. And and like you said, I mean, Danny and and John had, had kind of started it between themselves, and then uh, and then our son Finley came along, and um, I guess we we sort of fell into it. By accident, you know, through motorsport and um, you know, and, and getting to know Danny and, and, and knew John a little bit already, and and then Finley was on the rallies, and uh, he always got attention anyway. Yes. Um, and and yeah, it's been great. It really has, and and it's you know, people aren't in some ways. I guess people aren't scared to talk about it. Then, if the stickers are on the cars, people yeah. are happy to ask about Finley. They're therefore happy to ask how he's getting on and mm-hmm. and whatever. And um, you know, all of all the boys are, are doing well. You know, obviously John and Alex are, are competing oh, isn't regularly. That, isn't that such a fantastic story, isn't it? You know. It's yeah, like, yeah, it is. You know, it, it's lovely to see Alex winning rallies regularly yes. with with John, yes. and uh, you know, it'd be lovely to do that with with Finley one day. But yes. it's um, yeah, it's been nice because, like I said, people are interested, and in and I think it allows people to talk about it without feeling awkward about it. Yeah. Um, because even when. Finley was born down syndrome wasn't something we really knew about and um mm-hmm. it, it was a learning a learning process when Finley came along so um you know I think a lot of us are naive to these things unless we're directly involved in it that's for sure and like you know the awareness you know the, 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 there's been a lot of money raised and that's fantastic and that goes to great causes but as you say it's it's normalizing it. it's not making people well, better not ask you know, in case I say the wrong thing. It's the the awareness is is key. Yeah, it is. It is, and um, yeah, exactly. Like like you say, I mean, regardless of whether you know whether it's um, special needs or whether it's an illness or whether you know we we are generally reluctant people, aren't we? People yeah. we, we don't like to to ask if we don't know about it. We don't know what to ask. We don't know what to say. We don't know how to talk about it. And uh, yeah, and as I said, getting 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 the stickers out on the cars. And um, as you say, I mean, Danny done a, a phenomenal job, uh, particularly in Donegal with, with raising money. But um, it, it, as much as raising money, it, it was literally the awareness and just getting people talking about Down syndrome and just um, you know realizing that that that. Uh, not only, not, obviously, the well, Alex is growing up a bit now, but the, these are uh, a young, young lads, young boys. But, but you know, going down, thinking about adults and that mm-hmm. adults with Down syndrome can now lead normal lives, and um, you know, in everyday society. And uh, um, you know, actually led to to meeting Damon Hill and Damon Hill's son um, was well, again an adult now uh, with Down syndrome, and, and Damon Hill said that um, one of the most nervous days of his life was when his son went to work for the first time on his own, had to get the bus across town and, you know, starting a Grand Prix was normal to him. No. <laughs> Seeing his son go out the door to, to get on a bus and go to work wasn't. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you know, it's led to uh, uh, just a different path really. Yeah. And, uh, and I have to say, Finley, Finley's a real pleasure to, uh, to look after and in, in some ways uh, quite a lot easier than his younger sister. <laughs> Which you can imagine. And the, you know, you talked about the stickers that Danny and, and John came up with originally. The, they have been adorned your car, you know, they've been uh, across Africa, they've done the RAC rally, and beyond yourself, they have travelled the world. Yeah, and, they have. It's yeah, amazing. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally, they've been all over the world, like you said. Um, you know, quite a few cars have been running them on, on Safari and Barbados and yeah, yeah wherever. And it, it is nice to. Uh, uh, to to see the stickers out there, and um, you know, isn't something really we've been pushing that much? Maybe mm-hmm. you know, post COVID, but uh, mm-hmm. still, people want the stickers and, and want to run them, which is lovely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then before we let you go, like you're, whenever you started out rallying, the the big thing at that time was the one make 
you know, the championship, we think of the two fives and whatever. And the, you know, we think yourself, uh, Colin McRae, Richard Burns, uh, all these great names come through the sport with that. And here in Ireland next year, Kieran Graff and Sultan Tay launch uh, a Renault Clio challenge. Uh, like a one make championship is a, almost a no brainer from we think of the way it was in the past. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was a level playing field. That, that was the difference. Every everybody was more or less in the same car, and um, obviously, scrutineering was an important part of that as well. Um, but but yeah, you're all in the same car, and and like you said, Richard Burns, Colin McRae came through the, the Peugeot Challenge, but. You know, even my direct competitors, if you like, there was there was myself, there was Justin Dale, Neil Simpson, Jock Armstrong. Um, uh, you know, all in one year, there was like a, a lot of us that, uh, that all competed against each other. And then, of course, I went back and did uh, one or sixes against Rory Gallagher, against Chris Meek, Gary Jennings. Mm-hmm. Um, again, all in one year, and um, it's uh, it's amazing, really, when you look around those sort of that era of, of who came out of one mate championships. Um, I mean, I dipped in and out of quite a few one mate championships every time, every time the opportunity seemed to, to dry up, it was a good way to go back in. Um, the benefit then was they were all back for, back by manufacturers and, you know, and that'd be the next step. It's, it's great that, that Kieran's getting this off the ground because, you know, since uh, really since M sport did something, um, there, there really hasn't been a lot in the way of a one mate championship kicking around, but it um, it is when the manufacturers come in that the, that the thing really takes off because of the marketing and the support and the and the you know just the, the push they can put behind it, and that that was what was good in the in the Peugeot days. Was I mean Peugeot made money out of it, yeah, they the, the good selling the cars, the good, yeah. selling the kits, selling mm-hmm. the parts. You know, in the same way that M Sport make money out of selling an R five car or. Mm-hmm. Rally two cars, we're supposed to call them now, <laughs> yeah. uh, or rally three, rally four, whatever it is. You know, they're money making ventures, and and as was a, a one mate challenge back in the day. And that's mm-hmm. unfortunately, it, it, you know, manufacturers aren't that directly involved in rallying now to probably realise that they can. Uh, there's a money spender for them as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I say that, but then, like we said, we just said they're making money out of out of uh, rally two cars, so mm-hmm. inherently they can make money out of a, a cup car as well, if you like, and and that's almost what it what it needs, you know, whether whether it's based around like a uh, you know rally five car or or whatever. And but anyway, you know, to to go back to the point, yeah, great that that Kieran's kicking this off because we can't rely on the manufacturers now to do it. The manufacturers, unfortunately, aren't. In the sport, you know, in in England or Ireland, in in any real form, yes, form yeah, um, it's a and yet, exercise really a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. it mm-hmm. is, and yet if you go to France or Belgium or Spain or Portugal, the, the manufacturers do get directly involved, and that's you know that's what we we miss here. You see, in uh, Italy, they have a, a Yaris GR Cup. There's an Iberian one in Spain and Portugal. The Clio Championships run pretty much uh, throughout in, in Europe, the Suzuki championships, there's, yeah, the, there's opportunities for drivers there. And, um, and, and it is difficult now. Um, it's obviously a discussion point that comes up regularly. How, how does a driver progress? And, and we're all, we're almost seeing drivers almost bypass the British championship or the Irish championship now, just to try and go straight to world juniors. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's what we see as, as relevant, but, you know, you, the problem is you go in there and the cost of it, you, you're sort of learning at a very, very expensive level. Mm-hmm. Whereas historically, people learn on the British Championship, Irish Championship, whatever it was, you knew about making pace notes. Your pace notes were done and dusted. You know, mm-hmm. by the time you, you went to doing bigger, longer rallies, um, you were learning other things, but you right, weren't it was all just with gradual steps up, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. rather than just yeah. throwing you in at the deep end. Yeah, so, yeah and I mean, in, you know, in the Peugeot Challenge days, you had everything from small uh, sort of 45, 40, 45 mile one day rallies through to the longer rallies. And then you'd always finish up by doing some international rallies. And even during a year, it was a, a development process. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, any, anything that anybody's doing to, to, to put a level playing field back on the, on the table is, it can only be good for the sport. Lovely to catch up with Ryan, an absolute pleasure. Uh, I have to say I was a bit nervous speaking to him. <laughs> he's that voice, you know, he's part of the absolute rally uh, family and it's just lovely to hear his voice here. 
that is absolute pleasure to catch up with Miss. Um, as we spoke there towards the end of the the, uh, the the chat we had, it was about the how vital that like a one mate championship was to so many careers. And we mentioned Kieran Graff and starting up this Cleo uh, Trophy. Um, that was there was a sort of a soft launch there a few weeks ago up in St Angelo's and then still for you know a few guys get a chance to drive the car. And I caught up with them on the day. First of all, I'd catch up with John Armstrong and Josh McLean, and then Kieran himself, and then Andrew Nesbitt, and then finally Rory Kennedy. And get their thoughts on what their thoughts of the car is. Joined here now by Josh McLean and John Armstrong at the Clio Trophy uh, lunch, I suppose we could call it today. What are you making of the Clios? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a really good day, a lot of fun. Um, me and Josh's time has been really close, and. Uh, the car is really easy to drive um, and really fun to drive too. It's very controllable, so no, it's been a really good day. A bit wet, but um, no, good fun. And Josh, what's your thoughts on the car? Yeah, I think it's uh, the perfect step from General 1000 up to, to the FA ladder, I suppose. Um, as John says, they're very easy to drive. They're, they're very controllable and yeah, I think it's the perfect place to to go to, to progress so uh, yeah hopefully we get people out on them. Yeah I think you started off in the Junior 1000s you come up through that there so as you say it's a good stepping stone and in affordable I think is the, the big word. Yeah I think so and if, if there is a championship gets going it's the place to be because in rallying you need incentives and, and to, prizes to win so yeah I think this is the way forward and hopefully hopefully it comes together. Yeah. And John from your point of view too you know like you've climbed to the world championship has there been something like this whenever you were starting it would have been the ideal place to go wouldn't it? Yeah definitely um, you know there hasn't been too, too many championships like this in Ireland that are one make and uh, yeah it's, it's nice that the cars are all equal and the tyres will probably be equal as well so it really means that it's down to the, the crew and uh, and then if you come down on the stage and you're 10 seconds faster, you know that's because of you. But if you're slow, you know that's down to you as well. So there's no excuses. It's the best way to learn and, and push yourself. So, no, um, yeah, hopefully the, the championship can take off and uh, I think it'd be great for the young drivers. Yeah, and like, you know, it's not only going to be young drivers, you know, they're hoping to get, you know, more experienced crews out in the car as well. I think so, you know, that level playing field, it will help everybody develop. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you obviously need quick drivers to make a championship good. Um, yeah, it likes to hear today. I think the times have been well in the top ten against our fives as well. So it shows you the, the capabilities of the cars as well. So yeah, I think it's the way to go, and uh, it just needs a good push now. Yeah, and like John, you know, who would have put this? Like, is it something that you would be? You know, if things don't work out, would it be something you would look at coming back to? And you know, for a bit of fun, back and forth as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've always seen. Um, events like this single venue as, as a good way to have a bit of fun and um, you know I think it's the same for every driver you have that desire inside you to compete and it doesn't matter if that's in an R5 or you know a, a micro or, or a Clio like this it's all the same it's down to driving and driving it as fast as you can getting the most out of it and trying to have fun too and I think today has been really enjoyable you know there's no pressure on us it's just to have a bit of fun and uh, yeah it's um it's definitely the best way to, to go rallying. Yeah, and like you know, it keeps your reaction sharp. You know, it's, it's the same process you go through. This is in a world stage you almost do. Yeah, and there's so much um, you can learn from from doing events like single venue ones. You know, you can try different uh, techniques in your driving, try things with the car, and you know you can compare that run per run. And there's two laps as well, so you quite quickly figure out, oh, I messed up this lap, and then the second lap you'll do it a different way, and you'll find you'll feel it that's much quicker so it's a really good way to learn how to, to drive more efficiently too yeah, and josh i'm sure you would agree with that yeah i think so it's it's definitely rally sport association is where we both started and we're back again so uh it shows you it's, it's it works and yeah i think you can start whenever you're 12 years old so it's definitely the perfect ground and to, to go on and, and try to do good things so uh yeah we've enjoyed our day and hopefully there's maybe some more of these to, to come Kieran, we're here today in uh, just outside Enniskillen with the, the Clio Trophy. Uh, what an absolutely fantastic initiative. Ah, yeah, you know, like, it works really, really good in other countries. Like, you know, there was one of these rallies in France, there was 51 of these cars entered the rally. You know, the, and the, you hear from the boys today, they're such an easy car to drive. They're, they're really, really impressive. Mm -hmm. They're just so impressive. Like, I, and can you give us a sort of like a breakdown of the cars? You know, what's the power unit? And... The, the beauty of these cars here is it's virtually a standard factory built car. Built by Rel, so it is. So it's a factory built car. 
it's 180 brake horsepower i can't remember the torque for it really good torque on like uh, it's on a sat f sequential gearbox it runs standard brakes uh obviously it's quite over suspension so it has uh, it has a different ECU, hydraulic handbrake, brake bias. Uh, Apart from that there, every, every part on the car is standard. So like if you break a drive shaft or a washbowl yeah. or something out there, you can literally go to your Rellin dealership and just order a part. That's it. It's simple. You know, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. It, it is a no-brainer. And I say, like, Motorsport Ireland are doing a thing on, on Tuesday in Tina, and Josh is going to take one of these cars down and take young competitors coming from juniors up into the next level and stuff I spin on one of these cars like just let them see what they can do but like even Andrew you know he can't get over how good they are right, this is the guy that has yeah. won how many yeah. you know, rallies over yeah. the years you know and he just yeah. and a man's always been out of rallying for a long time he come here today fair play to him stepped into it you know he's come for the day's crack which we appreciate and he has really enjoyed it and Rory, Rory as well like you know <laughs> unbelievable like, yeah and like, you know you have two of the best you know and Ireland, I know, Ireland, I know. You know you have Joy, yeah. Joy, yeah. And they can't get over the car either. So like, that speaks well for a car that, as you say, almost you know just slightly up above standard. To have such fun on the car, it's all heard of. It's great to see. It is like you know, and, you know, even it's great when you see them two boys being so tight in time. Yeah. It just proves if you have the talent there, them drive, them cars are so drivable. Yeah. You know, they, they just work. Yeah. yeah. That's the nut behind the, the wheel that makes the Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Kieran, all the very best for this. No problem. Thank you for bringing. So we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Uh, it was great to see a Nedbit name back in the side of a rally car again, Andrew. Ah, uh, look, it was amazing to get round St Angelo's today, especially with all these young fellas like John Armstrong and uh, young Michael Lane. It's great to see it all. And look, there's 120 cars out there today. Conditions were wet, but I have to say the Clio is the Renault Clio is amazing. The grip with the car, the gearbox, the braking. Superb, and it was great to have Rory Kennedy back on board with me for one more run. <laughs> and like, these, the Kieran Grafton was explained to us, so almost like a standard car with you know, a few minor upgrades and one thing or another. This is such a, a, you know, a fantastic car for young guys coming up and even the, the, seri the seasoned competitor. Yeah, well, look at for a one car make, it's fantastic. I think there should be 20 of these cars on the island of Ireland for young guys coming through their first rally car, their first experience of rallying in Ireland and then they can move on to four-wheel drive cars later. But today, these cars were you know, right up there in the top 10. In fact, fifth and sixth and seventh. So that's a lot of pace for such a cheap car and a competitive car at that. Hey, and like, it will really show, that, you know, it will show the talent will show to you because all the cars being equal. You know, it showed where you can make improvements. You can see yeah. where all the people are doing and you can improve or whatever yeah. that needs to be done. Well, you can see young Josh McGurlain and John Armstrong there today. Their times were pretty much the same all day long and uh, so when they can get into the top six in these cars against R5s, Subarus, Mark II Escorts, they're all there, that's a very competitive car, especially in these wet conditions. And like for yourself, you know, you haven't like rallied a front wheel drive car before and like getting back into left hand drive, as a day of learning for you, you know, isn't that a great thing still? Well, do you know what, I love getting into left hand side because that's the only rally car I've ever driven since 95 they've always been left hand drive so that's very easy for me to get in there today but front wheel drive was a completely new experience left foot braking revving it out to the rev limit or all of that stuff I wouldn't be used to like as Rory and Kendi and I talked about we're used to a lot of torque but mm -hmm. these you have to rev them out yeah. and Josh and young Rick Lane showed that yeah, and that, you know, um, that's what rallying's all about. It's learning, it's always developing, it's moving on. Yes, and you know what, Kieran Grafton, hats off to him. Yeah. He's brought all of these rally cars here today to show the world of rallying what you can do with a one make strategy. Mm -hmm. And I hope it really works because we need something like that, a cheap entry into motorsport, and that will grow the sport throughout the island of Ireland and Europe. Yeah. Public experience again, um, they get an opportunity to sit with Andrew here at um, Niger Airport in Enniskillen and the, the Cleo Trophy Cup cars. Um, fair play to Kieran, Kieran Graffin. He's um, assembled, I think, maybe five or six cars and he's got Andrew, he's got um, Andrew, he's got Josh Michael Lane, John Armstrong, Callum uh, Graffin, and himself to drive the cars. And uh, it's a great opportunity to showcase the cars, what they're capable of, in a very controlled environment. And the, the, everybody seems very impressed with the cars. They seem to be loving them. It's such a, a great stepping stone from the junior categories, and you know, it's, it's a, a natural stepping stone. Uh, I think you're right, Kevin. It is the it is the sort of natural progression, you know, for young drivers. And um, and not only that, but I can assure you one thing: hey, John's only have to go in third fastest, and I think Josh maybe equal third fastest with him there on that last stage. And 
it's quite a variety of machinery here today, so it shows the potential of these cars. But anyway, it's um, absolutely a great stepping stone and a great progression for young drivers, you know. And, mm -hmm. You know, a structured one make championship is, is what uh, traditionally has been a feeding, sort of a feeder for uh, top drivers coming into the sport. Yeah, we think back, you know, years ago, like the Peugeot Cup and the Seat Cups and all those cups. That was what made, uh, you know, the likes of Colin McRae, the name he was, that's where he learned his trade almost. That's right, and Richard Burns too, he made that as well in the, yep. in the Peugeot Cup. But um, also don't forget we had the C2 Championship, sit on C2 Championship in more recent years. And that proved very, very competitive and some fantastic drivers come up through that as well. And um, you know, it, it, it gives the drivers opportunity to do the big rallies, do proper recce, write their own pace notes. And there's lots of manufacturer support, uh, maybe even tyre support, fuel support, insurances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's definitely a very good stepping stone for young drivers. That's for sure. And, the, uh, you know, and control costs as well. You know, the cars are you know, a step up from standard. They're not mega expensive to run. All those things are very important at an early stage of your career in rallying. Yeah, of course, I, and the cars are professionally built as well, and the, mar and the bargain, and you know they're modern, uh, a modern car, proper, proper category, and uh, you know it's 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 uh, dare I say it, they're good safe cars as well. Um, not to say any other cars aren't, but um, it's, uh, in terms of the cost, it's capped. The cars you pay whatever it is for the price of the car in day one, and generally everything else, all the other costs are capped. And I suppose that's essentially what makes it um, very affordable rally, and if rallying can be affordable. Yeah, that's for sure. So, uh, like, we're, we're, we're pushing Kieran all the best for this. Great, it's a fantastic initiative. We're proud of Kieran for taking the initiative, as you say, Kevin. Um, something like this, rally needs, badly needs something like this as a feeder for our young drivers into the top level uh, in this country. And uh, Kieran is a great rally man himself, great family tradition, and a uh, supplier of a lot of rally cars, as we well know. Very good driver in his own right. So it's great that somebody like that who understands the sport is behind us. And um, look, there's lots of people here today who's taking lots of interest in what's going on. And uh, you know, I think this can only go from strength to strength. Uh, great, and I really, I have great high hopes for that championship. So, you know, watch this space, as they say. Uh, also got a chance to catch up with Scott Singleton. Maybe not a name that's familiar. The surname we're familiar with. <laughs> I suppose spectators of a, a, a certain vintage like ourselves, Connor. But <laughs> um, his father is Wally Singleton, and like he had some phenomenal tires over the years. But uh, Scott recently took part in a rally out in Belgium, and I just thought it was a, a fascinating story. I uh, wanted to hear more about it, but I started off by asking him how he got involved in rally. Um, well, I really I started rally crossing when I was when I was eighteen, but. Um, it was always just a stepping stone before I, before I got into rallying. So um, I've a, a, I had a car just before COVID, a rally car, and after doing I think it was done three years in rallycross. So uh, I bought a, I bought a new car there at the start of the year, and we've been doing bits and pieces, um, sort of in the north, and uh, we're we done the we done the down rally, and then we done the Ulster. So we hadn't. We had much luck now in the Ulster. I think we only got four stages and we broke a half shaft. But no, uh, I think how how the whole Belgium thing come about was uh, I was out in holidays in uh, in Belgium in uh, outside Ypres, and we went to a uh, uh, shop one morning, and uh, there was a poster up, and on the poster it said uh, it was a T TBR rally, so that was on that Sunday in the town that we're staying in. So I was say I said that I'll go there and we'll go and check it out and see what it's like. But so I went and we watched it and we got talking to a few of the uh, a few of the competitors and I think that was in July time and in mid October we we're back competing ourselves. So <laughs> isn't it funny? Sometimes the simple things can lead to to greater things. I suppose you know. So <laughs> oh, it can, yeah. And like you know. What is what's the roads like out there in comparison? You know, we look at we can see uh, uh, you are in the WRC this year, and it's it's very flat, it's very fast. You know, and then it's a lot of very tight junctions. Was that your experience of the roads out there? Or is the rally you doing completely different? You no, know, well, going out there with uh, dad had me. Dad he had done a lot of rallying up around the Aper, so that's where this rally was. But um, it's totally different around Flanders compared to where. Down sort of the, where the escort rally would have been, um, that's sort of down the south of France or south of Belgium, down towards France. But 
up in North France and Flanders, it's very, very slippy, like in big, deep hedges and flat ground. And uh, it was it was totally different than home. And any bit of rallying I've done at home, it was nothing in comparison to it. Um, it was just, it was just, it was like even in the dry, you were it was just like driving in the wet at home. It was, uh, it was <laughs> that was a real challenge. So it was, but um, that was a good experience. Now it was. There's no no jumps, no bumps. All uh, it was it was very good now. Yeah, and like we should explain to you know maybe anybody that's not aware, you're talking about your dad there, your father as Wally Singleton, like a great driver back in you know I suppose the the nineties and the early nineties was his heyday really, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, dad. Um, it was dad. Sort of he he had pushed me so much to. He says that definitely you'll have to go out at some point, and even if. I think I've been out to watch Rally Ypres itself about four times. So whenever the opportunity came up, and I mentioned it to Dad, he was he was definitely he was he was game for it now. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And like he was probably at you know back to never going away to like somewhere like Holland or France or something to do a rally. It was on here though in this country. Your dad was doing that. Like we, we remember him going over there and the the Sierra and the Escort WRCs and all that. So he he was a trailblazer in many ways. Yeah, well, I think he, the first time he went out was in, I think it was 84, he went out with Trevor Agnew, um, I went out and done the, I think it was Rally Duwalny, or I don't know, pronunciation might not be that good, but um, he, they went out and done that, and I think they were, I think he was 8th overall, or ninth overall, and uh, I think he, he went off, but no, that was, I think that was the first time he he was out and he, he's went back really every year from that. Mm-hmm. So he did. Excellent. Excellent. And like, you, you know, to compete in the rally, uh, you know, you're up against some great opposition out there. Uh, you come away with a, a very good result to finish it. Yeah, I did. Well, weren't expecting it now, especially the, on the, the Saturday night. Um, when we went out to the night stage, it was, we just we were going out the road and we we're kind of I didn't I didn't know what to expect. It was it's totally the there's no abrasion whatsoever in the tar like um it's so slippy like so the next thing the rain had started coming on very very heavy and um, that didn't do the confidence any good. But so we decided we'll try and get through the the Saturday night and the way the the two night stages worked. So it was a loop that started you on a like a a flyover of a motorway and. Um, you could you would done your I think it was seven or eight k, you done it and you come the finish line was only about five hundred meters from the the start line of that original stage, and then they brought you round to the start line again of your first stage and they brought you halfway down the first stage and then they took you off at a different junction, so uh, that was it was all it was a that was a a learning curve too like because it's never been. At a stage in that kind of format before, mm-hmm. but um, no, we're just glad to get through Saturday night. Now I think we're we're thirty sixth overall, and that was then your starting number on on the Sunday. So yeah, I was happy now. Yeah, and then you know, come uh, the Sunday evening, you were like you were up there among the two wheels right guys at the finish up. I think were you third two wheels right at the finish up. Yeah, um, we're. Sort of on the on the Sunday, we we just kept uh, we just kept battering away all day, really. Um, just I wanted to get a finish, especially after the Ulster. So, um, to whenever we come over the ramp, and that's uh, it wasn't expected. Now we got <laughs> it was a big surprise. I think we were the first foreign crew, and we were the first in that in the FIRC. Mm-hmm. So I was was more than happy now to to come away we're, we're over our come away at 19th or overall so yeah like you know what a brilliant result your first time there your third ever rally <laughs> and come away with a top 20 finish uh, you know it's nicely bringing the back of crystals home as well like it, it must have exceeded your expectations in a massive way oh it definitely did yeah i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't expect it to be anywhere near it now i was definitely I was very pleased to I think the celebrations on Sunday night we all paid the price on Monday morning, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's part and parcel of it. I think. Yeah, uh, I hope you can celebrate the good days, sure. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> and then you also got a chance to meet like a legend 
uh, Paul Ledger, or Paul Leader, sorry, Leader. Paul Leader, yeah. Uh, Paul Leader. Like many people here in Ireland remember him. He came over to uh, Clarney a few times back in the day. And he was also back over last year for the Clarney Historics. Like he rallied Mantas and the Skonas. And all. Like he is a hard charger. It must have been a pleasure meeting him. Oh, it was, yeah. Um, the way when you, you when you come over the, the ramp at the end, they, they put the first overall, first historic and the first foreign crew all in a row. So um, I had the pleasure of meeting Paul then. We were parked beside each other. and oh, he's, a, he's a total gentleman. And uh, he was definitely was, I was happy now to, to be up there sitting beside him anyway. But he, he has a, an Ascona 400 and he has a Manta 400 as well still. And um, actually, he gave the the four hundred Manta to uh, his mechanic to do that rally, and so he did. So I met him also. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was good. Now he's going. I think for the talk of him, he says he's coming over to do the historics this year again. So Brilliant. we'll have Brilliant. to see. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, going back to your dad, like you know, he had some high, iconic cars in his day. You know, we think of the blue gas uh, Sierras, and then the. Escort WRC and all that. Does he still keep an interest in rallying? Will they, you know, does he still go out and watch? Is the, is the, is the net still there? Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> he, uh, you no, know, Dad's is, is involved in it with me and my brother. My brother still rally crosses, so mm -hmm. he's involved in the two of us. Our motorsport skin is, uh, has took over his in a way, like, so he gets his buzz out of us, I suppose, but, uh, you know, no, he's. He's still mad for it. He loves it. Loves every bit of it. And would he offer you advice and all still to, you know, the oh, he would. wee tricks? He would. <laughs> yeah, he had. Uh, he was a, a mind of knowledge at the start, especially going out to, to Belgium. Like it was, um, as I say, the abrasion in the tyre, like uh, the tyre, would you sort of tyre choice at home is totally different out there. Like I had the, I had the same, the same four tyres on for 11 stages on they done four stages at home as well in the Ulster. And there's not a mark on them. There's it's just it's like driving, it's pure polish the polish the surface is like. So um you have to run a really soft tire choice, even though it could be twenty degrees, like it's just the way it is. But dad, he could help me with all that. And yeah, especially with pace notes and stuff too, he was a good help because uh, it's hard getting your braking, you know, for for square lefts and square rights because there's no no hedges or trees. Oh, yes, you I can mean. never see it. Mm -hmm. You've you've no landmarks. So one minute you're you're flat out, and the next thing you you're into a square left. Actually, <laughs> I think on the the Saturday night, I think we overshot twice, three times maybe. So yeah, Dad was he's a good hand. Now. Definitely is. And the you know, it not be a bit early yet, but are, you know, have you any plans maybe for the rest of this year? Or are you, you would you be thinking maybe going back and doing more foreign events maybe next year? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do the Killarney Historics this year, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna I'm definitely I'm, I'm gonna do a bit more rallying around home next year. But I'm I'm definitely gonna go back to Belgium. I really really enjoyed it. Like so, mm -hmm. I'll definitely I'll be back next year. It's the only the only problem with it is is the travel time away from home. Mm -hmm. So it is. So I think uh, I think I was away for seven days. I had to get the the boat from Ross or from Dublin to Cherbourg direct, so that's nearly nineteen hours, mm -hmm. and it only runs twice a week. So it left me; I was away from home quite a while. So yeah, can't overtake work either. But <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely I'll be back next year. Wonderful to hear the Singleton name being mentioned again in connection with rally, and like you know. Genuinely loved watching Willie Singleton competing at, at, at a variety of rallies whenever I was 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 out spectating and at the, you know when I when I really get into it so fantastic that uh, what do you call it his son's now competing and and uh, looking forward to see how he gets on in Killarney in the historics yeah and then I caught up with Eva Raftery so we had spoken to Eva uh, oh a couple of months ago at this stage and. Uh, what do you call it? She has had an announcement of uh, her next couple of events, so I caught up with to see what she's going to be doing. Aoife, um, it's a few weeks since we last spoke. Delighted to have you back on the podcast. You've been busy since we were last in touch. You've been out at WRC Catalonia. What were you doing there? Hi, Connor. Thanks for having me on. Um, so, yeah, we were in Spain for, at the WRC rally. We, Myself, my co-driver, Geraldine, we headed out to do recce. 
Um, so we did our recce under the WRC regulations. Um, and then we attended a Motorsport Island Rally Academy test and we went to Shakedown, met loads of new people. And then we even drove over Friday stages on the Saturday after the rally had been over it as well, just to get a look and a feel for how big the cuts, cuts actually were and how slippy the surface where all the mud and the gravel was pulled out as well. And were you surprised by the amount of pollution generated by the cars and maybe how deep some of the cuts actually ended up being? Yeah, it was, it was impressive. Um, we had a lot of the cuts marked, but I don't think we realised how big of cuts they actually were going to be. So that was impressive to see. And also we marked that down as well. But like you could see that you had to follow the cut because if you didn't, you were just, it was so slippy. You had to, you had to go in at the cut as well. A lot of bravery involved in those cuts. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But no, it was it was really worthwhile. It was brilliant. Like we learned so much, and the recce was tough. A tough two days, and we um no, we were happy to get all our notes down and done. Um, it definitely was a big learning experience. And what do you call it after Spain? Then you've you've just announced that you're going to be competing in Italy on two events. So what will you be doing in Italy? So we're heading over to Italy tomorrow to uh, take part in two events. One is kind of east of Italy in Singoli area. And that we're taking part in a gravel rally. They're part of the gravel championship. Um, So we're actually going to be competing for the first time in a Peugeot 208 Rally 4. So that in itself is a step up for us. Um, So we're looking forward to that. We're going to do a test. Um, We'll do recce, a shakedown, and then the rally. So we're really looking forward to it. And um, have you, so this is your first time, because normally you compete in the in the Fiesta R2 car, so this is your time to step up to the RC4s? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be your first time. We're really looking forward to it. I, c- I can't wait to drive it and see what it's actually like to drive. So it's going to be brilliant for us. It's something new, a uh, new challenge, but we're, we can't wait for it. And the, the first event, you said that's a gravel, uh, what do you call it, rally, and in the second event, that's asphalt. Is that correct? Yeah, so then the next week, then we're heading up to northwest of Milan. And there we're going to be taking part in a tarmac rally, um, Rally del Osola. So we um, that'll be good as well. And at least we'll have a, a one rally done in the Rally 4. Um, but no, we're really looking forward to it. So yeah. And I suppose, you know, obviously picking out possible events to do why why did you decide or settle on on going to Italy for the two events and also you know rather than doing two back-to-back gravel or two back-to-back tarmac you know you're you're separate you're you're doing one of each really so we're doing uh one gravel and one tarmac because we feel that as rally drivers we need to be able to drive on both surfaces um and it shouldn't we we shouldn't have a problem switching from gravel to tarmac. And at least that way we'll get to learn the roads in Italy, both surfaces. It's a new challenge. And um, Italy, I suppose, was we've, we're coming off the back of doing a rally in San Marino last July, or this July this year. Um, and that we had a good run there. So off the back of that with the team we were running with, Tamara Molinaro, and the Motorsport Island Rally Academy, we plan to come out again and do these two events and we put in a lot of hard work all year um so we're really looking forward to it and you you mentioned tamara there and it's it's her g car sport team have you had much advice from tamara about you know how how to to prepare and prep yourself for these two rallies yeah yeah she's been a great help and we're gonna be working closely with her as well when we head out to italy so it'll be great to have her experience and her knowledge of the roads to help us and just kind of guide us and give us tips so no it'll be really good to have her like she's a european rally championship ladies winner so to have that help and that support will be great and what are you and geraldine targeting from the two events what what do you have other than getting the experience is there anything else you're aiming to get from this um, I think for us, the, one of the big things is it's going to be taking a step up in the Rally 4. So it'll be good for us to also gain some knowledge on driving that um, to see as well. It'll be great for us. I suppose a lot of it is about experience and building up as much seat time and especially outside of Ireland as well. Um, but to have Tamara there, I think that's going to be a big help. So it's 
it's the preparation, everything that goes into doing an event outside of Ireland. It really all helps going forward to do more rallies as well. Like if we want to keep progressing and doing more rallies outside of Ireland. So this all contributes to that. Brilliant. And is it too early yet for plans for next year? Things still up in the air or, or kind of have you have you got a plan now coming together? Um, no, things are still kind of up in the air. Like we're trying to come up with a good plan and include rallies that are both here in Ireland and then also outside of Ireland. Um, but no, the hopes would be to compete in both nationally and international events. Um, and hopefully if we could do some more recce's as well on like as we did for Spain, that would be super for us because there's just so much learning involved in that. Um, but yeah, no, we're trying to make plans for next year. So that'll be good as well. So Eva, you're very heavily involved with MI Academy. How are they supporting you with these two events? Yeah, we've put in a lot of hard work with the Motorsport Ireland Rally Academy. They've been in great help and support and the, all the background team. So without them, it wouldn't be possible to be going to the, these events. Um, we've done nearly 20 rallies this year. So that alone has built us up. And San Marino um, with the Motorsport Ireland Rally Academy, it's all led to here. So with working with them, um, we're hoping to put in a good good results and you know uh, gain that knowledge and experience over in Italy. And, and again, you know, uh, as Aoife says, uh, they're, you know, MI Academy, it's amazing the work they're doing with the youngsters and bringing them through and the, the experience that they're now starting to get, not just at home, but on the world stage. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, like they have right from the grassroots, right up to somebody now sitting in that, you know, a rally one car. Like Japan this weekend, you know, uh, James Fulton is going to step in, who has, you know, benefited from this program. That just shows you that the value that's going to be, you know, we can't, I don't know, I, I can't even get the words, like, we, we can't downplay this. You know, this is a phenomenal experience. Oh, it is, genuinely. I, I mean, personally, absolutely delighted for James and of everything crossed that he has a fantastic weekend sitting beside Craig. But you're right, you know, the opportunities that this academy is producing. Uh, and even, you know, as we spoke to Aoife there about what they were doing in Spain, you know, where they brought that group of youngsters out to do the practice recce to then go back and see the stages after the WRC cars have been on them to see the, the cuts and the ruts and the amount of rubbish that have been pulled onto the road so that they have an understanding of what they'd be facing um to compete you know on these events at that level I don't, I don't know, it's phenomenal it really is and even to have the foresight to do that like that you know there's the the, the brain power is behind us it's great to see you know it really is it really is you know so, and then you know we're mentioning japan japan this weekend the final round of the, the championship you know yes the drivers the championship to say that the constructor championships to say that but it's not going to be a dull rally we know what it means. No, definitely not. And I suppose first first person that springs to mind is Aaron Johnson sitting with Takamoto on Takamoto's home event, yeah. driving for the home team. So, you know, a very, very special weekend for them. I know there's very high hopes for, for Takamoto having a really good run on this, and hopefully he does. Um, like they're they're having a cracking championship bar, you know one or two events that didn't go their way. They've had a fairly solid run this year. And and it really is a great performance from Aaron and Takamoto at, at their first solid year together as well. You know, they're, I think they're comfortable fifth in the championship. You know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure whether they can be caught or not. But like, that's, you know, again, that's one of our guys in the top five in the World Championship. That's just brilliant, isn't it? You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's no mean feat. And again, you know, Toyota, the, the home event, the, the drivers' championship, the, the manufacturers' championship. Japan's been on the cards now for the last two years, but mm-hmm. with COVID, they're finally getting to compete at home and really celebrate what that Toyota team have done mm-hmm. over the last couple of years in the championship and how they've come together and been so strong. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's great for the sport. It's great for for Toyota, and I hope it encourages other some of the other Jap- Japanese manufacturers to maybe consider. You know, returning to the sport wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great? And like, you know, it'd be great to see them take the one. But like, how they maybe want to try and spoil the party? Like, we know that uh, Tannock and the Vogue especially can be frightfully fast on car. So like, they're you know they're not going to get it all their own way. No, they're not. And and you know, Hyundai and both Tannock and the Ville have their own 
you know, every all three there, the team and the two drivers have a lot to prove and, mm -hmm. and want to prove, yeah. you know, coming into the end of the season. And, you know, I think from a Hyundai's perspective, having had their struggles all year, I'm sure they'd love to give Japan a bloody nose mm -hmm. on home soil. Mm -hmm. um, if they could pull it off. And, and Neville certainly seems to be talking it up that, you know, he wants the victory. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Tanak is, while well, maybe not talking it up, is mm -hmm. thinking exactly the same way. For sure, for sure. And then, you know, you have uh, Oje, you know, who is probably like a, a god almost in Japan. He's not going to be wanting to, you know, go away without kissing the champion someday evening. Rogan Perra, the world champion, you know, he's going to want to go finish the year in a high. Evans is a lot to prove still, you know, is he going to be, he's obviously going to be fired up. So it's, it's going to be a very exciting rally. It really is, um, you know, and there is going to be, you know, competition from the get go. Like there, there's nobody going to hold back and there's no reason to hold back anymore either, you know, with, with the championships in the bag. And, you know, again, with OJ, he hasn't had really the opportunity to celebrate you know, with Toyota on their home soil for the last few years. So the perfect opportunity for him. And I'm sure he'd want the Jap you know, the Japanese win under his belt as much as Rovan Para and as much as, you know, Evans, you know, to to, to prove a point. For sure, for sure. And like that's not even to mention the M sport, you know, our own Craig Brain. And uh, we mentioned earlier, you know, James sitting with him for the first time as well. They they seemed a bit lost in Spain. Like hopefully they, they unlock the key and have the front of the car doing what they want it to do. Yeah, it's, you know, Spain seemed to, to bring out a weight distribution issue down to the hybrid units and basically the, what do you call it, the the the, the just the, the front tyres weren't, um, they were fine for the first few K, but after that they were just scrubbing the tyres and, you know, complete loss of grip and uh, that seemed to be an issue on tar that they hadn't identified up until the testing for Spain. Mm -hmm. So I think that one kind of caught them by surprise. So hopefully they have gotten on top of that for, you know, the roads in Japan. That is for sure. That is for sure. Uh, like, and, you know, obviously tarmac, you know, we know closer to home here, the weather can play such a part of the, and the event, you know, you know, if it's going to be either completely wet or completely dry, the, the old mixed conditions play havoc with everybody's territories. They do. And then on top of that, you have parts of this is are tree lined mm -hmm. and, it, you know, the, the, the leaves are coming off the trees and they are sitting on the road. So there are patches there, even if it's dry, there's, you know, that mucky, wet, greasy, yeah. mm -hmm. greasy leaf mulch, mm -hmm. you know, is there that could easily catch somebody out. And then the other thing with Japan, you have big, wide drainage ditches, a little bit like Ypres in some respect, you know, where you have those drainage ditches right beside the asphalt. You know, Japan is the same issue there as well. So, again, they've got to be neat and tidy on those stages. Yeah, so we'll keep a watch and brief on that over the weekend. But it's going to be difficult because it's on the middle of the night here. But anyway, yep. <laughs> so what can we do? <laughs> so what, that was what's, it. what's another weekend with no sleep? Well, that's true. <laughs> 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 no, for completely different reasons we, we had 20 odd years ago. But anyway, <laughs> that was episode 38. Uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, can please like, share, comment, rate. All those things make a huge difference in it. In, uh, heartening to see all the kindness that you've over the last few weeks. So until the next time, take care, speak soon and bye. <laughs>